Mercy Road Church, welcome to the online campus. We're getting ready for Mercy Road in Motion. My name is Rob and I'm the online campus pastor. And I'm Megan and I'm the creative director here. And we are excited to have you join us online this morning. Megan, what can we expect this morning for our online service? Oh, expectations. Uh, Mercy Road in Motion usually has some strange smells happening from Eric's RV. There's always something expected. weird going on in there. Uh, we usually have a really cool message from Josh and then some really interesting testimonies from people that are involved in our outposts here. Awesome. I also want to let you guys know what to expect with the online campus. Some of you have probably never been to an online experience before. You're just used to going into the building, but uh, with our online campus, we have uh, some really exciting things going on. One, I want you to know it's, it's an exciting place to be. We're going to have people from all over the world that are watching today. You can share this online, mercyroad.tv, with all your friends. It's also a really engaging thing that you can do because we have the online chat where you can chat up and talk with people who are watching online. I know that feels a little bit different because you're used to in church, you gotta be kind of quiet at church, but when you're online, it's a totally different experience. So we want you to get involved. Don't watch alone. Participate with other people online. It's gonna be an engaging experience for you this morning. And then the last thing is it's powerful. The things that we're seeing online is just as powerful as anything we'd ever see at the church building itself. People are praying for people, people are getting saved, people are inviting friends out. It's a really great experience and we also are gonna soon be starting groups online, which is something that we'll be doing later this summer. So uh, it's gonna be a great experience. We want you to jump in, get involved, and have a good time. That's right. So this morning's gonna be super exciting. Uh, Rob, what are we gonna learn about this morning? We are gonna learn about what an outpost is. So we have been talking about outposts around here. Some of you have maybe never attended an outpost. We're gonna go inside one of our outposts, Mercy Fest, and we're gonna see the mission that they have, and we're gonna see them going to Union City to make a difference in Northern Indiana in a small town, in a school with students. It's gonna be- They're gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Luke is there, so you know that's gonna be- And Eric. And Eric. It's They're crazy. The combination of those two, you, 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 you never just know. never know what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, we're going to go inside that. We're going to learn what it means to be on mission. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really exciting. Community. Yeah, with your community. So we're going to we're going to have a great experience online this morning, and we're excited to have you guys join us. So grab your lucky charms and your pajamas and your pajamas and your. How oranges. do you eat your lucky charms? Uh, I save all my marshmallows until the very no, end. No, you have to do a good marshmallow to oats ratio on the spoon, every spoonful. So like a half and half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, like three and three, you gotta do that. Okay, so let us know how you eat your lucky <laughs> charms. Mercy Road in Motion is about to begin. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Here we are. It is Friday, the day of Mercy Fest, and we have made it all the way to U-Haul to fill up on propane. <laughs> Solid five minutes from the house. If we don't get propane, our volunteers are gonna be very cold. Happy Memorial Day weekend, Mercy Road. I'm standing here at Mike Kleinbug's RV. We're getting ready to head up to beautiful Union City, Indiana home of the Union City Community High School where the Mercy Fest Outpost from Mercy Road is putting on a special outreach event and we want to give you a front row experience. This is Mercy Road in motion only this weekend. Uh, you're going to get some fun experiences as we uh, record from the RV going up to the event. So come on board with us as we experience this together. We are now on the party bus. I, I'm sitting here with Chris Kleinbub. He is one of the leaders of the Mercy Fest Outpost. We're driving his dad's RV up to Union City Community High School right now. This was pre-recorded, but we are kind of live here in the sense that we don't know what's going to happen. We didn't plan this. We're literally getting a documentary footage of what's actually going to happen tonight. This outpost has been praying and and planning for months and months and months, even maybe a year leading up to this event, where they're gonna present the gospel to a whole bunch of students and people in a small town here in, in Indiana. If you're watching this online right now in different parts of the country, Union City Community High School is the size of about 6,000 people. The local high school has about 300 students 
Tell us a little bit about Mercy Fest, what to expect today, Chris, and what all you guys got planned. So today what we're going to do is just half of what we consider a Mercy Fest. We're going to do a youth outreach type show where um, we've actually, their FCA, um, Union City, has a really good uh, story around it. They've got a girls f uh, basketball team that uh, went to the state championship game. Unfortunately, they lost, but uh, they went to it when they had a lot of prayer before the games. They were really interacting in it. And so um, we've done this show for them for the last four years. And what they've done is asked a bunch of the FCAs in surrounding towns to come in. So where we were averaging about 100 to 120, I think we may have as upwards of 300 kids that will go with us. It's great that there's a lot of people and a lot of resources in Indianapolis, but there's a lot of small towns that don't have the same access that we do at Mercy Road, sitting in Carmel, Hamilton County, that these people don't. So we try to take the quality production that you'd get at a Mercy Road or some other of the nicer churches around Indianapolis and do that in these small communities and give them a taste to hopefully someday build relationships and stuff to where we can build a, a maybe a church there. I wonder what uh, Eric's RV is doing right now. Didn't he already head up there? He didn't head up there. It's probably sitting on the side of the road somewhere smelling like whatever it smelled like when you guys did this last time, right? This RV smells so much better. Hello, Mercy Road. We are in bus number two, headed up to Union City for Mercy Fest, where over 300 students are coming together from five different schools. And uh, we can't wait to do the music and share the gospel with these kids tonight and to hear their testimonies of what God is doing in their lives at their schools. And so driving the bus here, we've got Ryan Fitzpatrick, one of our drummers and sound techs from Mercy Road. We've got Brian Vermillion over here riding shotgun, one of the founding members of we call our worship team No Mercy. No Mercy. We've got Lauren Lemmy over here on the uh, like shotgun mic thing. Yeah, hold it down. This is, this is a legitimate film we're making here, folks, a legitimate documentary. And I want to just draw some attention to my wife, Jillian, who's dressed for the Arctic. It is currently about 45 degrees in our RV. We found out last night that our propane line has a leak in it. And so when we tried to fill it up this morning, it didn't work, it sprayed everywhere. So the bus smells like propane and we are freezing. So we have this down here. Reggie, the trusty space heater. It's a 1988 space heater. Keeping it safe. Holding it down. Anyway, we will keep you in the loop as the adventure develops here, folks. So excited. So I'm pretty excited right now. We're so excited. We're driving through middle America right now, small towns here in Indiana, gonna bring Jesus to Union City Community High School. He's already there, the FCA there. For those in Union City, it's amazing what God is already doing there. And I just gotta ask you, does this RV smell good, first of all? Uh, you know, I heard the descriptions of Eric's RV, and this is nothing like it. So we have a very strange smell, I'm trying to localize. I'm trying to find it? Yeah. So, uh, so that we can maybe use a rug to like cover it up or yeah. spray some Febreze down there yeah, instead. Right. It might be coming from inside this banana. Not coming from in here. Look in the oven. Oh! <laughs> it's definitely coming from in there. Let me ask, tell us your story a little bit. Like, why are you here? On this RV? Yeah, on this RV. Why are you going to Union City? It all began with our outpost, right? I joined this outpost because this outpost is very uh, mission driven. And I really like that a lot. I'm a big believer in. Uh, in, in James, as you know, James 2:13 to 18, yeah. very much about having mercy with people, very much about working with people. So hearing that this outpost participated in a lot of these mission missions, like Christmas in Action, like the Mercy Fests, like Life Remodeled, which is coming up later this year, really caught my interest and I really kind of gravitated towards this. I'm also sitting here with Mike Kleinbub. This is uh, your RV. So you've been to Mercy Fest, this is your second time, but now you're actually serving on it. It was so uplifting that the number of young people that came forward that night to dedicate their life to Christ. Yep. Hopefully we can go back and maybe the numbers won't be that great, but if we can do num get one. One person in heaven, man. One's enough. are traveling down the road you can hear the RV and our theme this morning is to fight the good fight and finish the race it's race weekend we're driving an RV rolling down the road we want to fight the fight to win the race I want to read these passages from first Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 to 12 
But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Literally, we want to, as Christians, fight the good fight of faith. You may be watching this in different parts of Indiana or the country around the world right now, going, why are these guys in an RV? They're doing church in an RV this morning. What's going on? Because we genuinely believe we only have a limited time here on this planet to serve the Lord and make a difference with our life, to live our twofold mission, to help those in need and share our faith. And that's what this outpost, which is a missional community, we have about 20 different missional communities around the Indianapolis area, and this is one of them living on mission to bring the good news of Jesus and help those in need in different parts of the state. And so we're traveling right now up to Union City Community High School to present the gospel to hopefully hundreds of high school students and people in the community. See, Paul writes to Timothy in that passage, and he does another time in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. As the Indy cars uh, today, the, the largest spectacle in racing is going on today. They're going to be driving over 200 miles an hour around that racetrack in the same way that they are, they are racing to win, right? Like they've got whole teams dedicated to trying to win that race this morning and this afternoon. Uh, we have people here dedicated to winning the race of life to tell people about Jesus and share their faith. Now, i got atheists and agnostic friends that go, why in the world would they want to do that? And doesn't that come across as like a self-righteous or I'm better than you? Not when it's done in the way of Jesus. It's done out of love. We love the people we're going to tell about the faith, and so we want them to experience uh, that very thing. But the reality is, in order to see this happen, if you're a Christian and you're watching this, it is a fight in the sense that you have to fight against your, your own desires to not give up your time, not give up your talents, not give up your treasures to, to do what the rest of us would love to do, spend more time on vacation, going out and doing fun things rather than living on mission like this. So I want to ask a couple of the people that are here in the RV with me right now about that. I know Dave, let's sit back right here, man. I'm here with Dave Rothenberg. Uh, we're fighting the good fight of faith right now. You are going, living on mission. What did you have to fight against in order to be here uh, this afternoon as we're traveling together? I'm coming to realize that my biggest enemy, besides the enemy, is time. So one thing that I really had to give up is I really had to fight the urge to check these other things off my checklist and instead spend the entire afternoon and the entire evening going out and doing this and it's just a matter of that being a priority and really living living in faith with what you believe or yeah, at least well, I believe. So as we're fighting the good fight, finishing the race, trying to lead others to Christ with the short time we've got, we're using our time, we're giving up our Friday nights. Angie, I got you over here as well. This is live. None of this is scripted. We don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. Uh, but Angie, what, what do you think that, um, what, what did you have to give up in order to be here? What's the, the fight in your life? You know, I think I can speak to the moms that we tend to put everything we have into our families. I'm, and I work too. So, you know, I have a full-time job, full-time family. And I've got a kid who has a concert tonight that I'm not going to go to. Um, you know, my husband's going to go and, and watch him. But I mean, it's the end of the school year. We have a lot on our calendar, but this is important. And, um, you know, I think as, as moms, we kind of get sucked into that. And there's a mom guilt is a real thing um, and we can get sucked into that and go well this this is only going to ever happen once but if you take a step back and look at your life as a whole um, we have a lot of opportunities to do things daily constantly with our kids and we don't get a lot of chances to go and impact other people outside our families so I know you know I, as a mom with younger kids, my mission field is my family. Um, but now that my kids are getting a little older, I do want to step out and um, and have an impact elsewhere too. Fight the good fight, finishing the race. Part of that is like not going. Well, I've done that. I've done that before. Like, why? Why do I need to do it again? So what motivates you after living on mission for all these years to keep doing this? Well, I think I look at it, and this year I hit 52, and I realize, you know, I am on to down swing. Now there's still a, young. There's You're a long way young. to go, but if I'm not going to do it now, when am I going to do it? Yeah. And so I think that's one of the things that kind of hit me is, you know, I can sit around and say I'm going to do it next year, but 
this is the year to do it. We are still on the RV. It's a little bumpy, uh, but we just discovered that Eric Lindahl, the uh, Next Gen Associate Pastor, has fallen asleep in the back. So let's come on back here and find out what he's doing. He's seriously, he's actually asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on back. Eric, what are you doing? <laughs> are you awake? Dude, what are you doing back here? You just decided to make yourself at home and hang out in the bed? I to take a nap, Josh. <laughs> uh, but now I'm on TV. How's it going? <laughs> uh, is this pretty normal? Do you go into random people's RVs and just like use their bed and fall asleep? Um, what's not normal is me getting caught. Well, hey, while, while we just woke you up, you want to wipe some of the sweet sleep out of your eyes here. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you're, you're from Arizona, okay? Yes. Uh -huh. Like, this is the coldest weather we would ever have. It's raining right now. Memorial yeah, Day weekend is probably like 100 degrees, but it's actually cold today. So, like, what, what brings you to come out on your day off two hours away? We've been talking about fighting the good fight, finishing the race. What did you have to give up in order to be here? Yeah, I mean, well, right now I'm giving up hanging out with my wife and working on some homework. Um, but, I mean, the gain is getting to hang out with, with the outposts and help them out and really just uh, hopefully impact the youth over at Union City. Um, my and stealing a nap in here right now, right? That was a big part of why you came? Yes, attempting to steal a nap, actually. Um, but, but, yeah, no, I'm just really excited. This is I love youth ministry and doing anything like this and even getting to work alongside a lot of the adults um, who make this possible. It's fun. Right on, man. Well, we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're here on this RV. We're glad that you're here in Indiana with us living on mission Thanks, to those around the country. Uh, he gave up, uh, left everything that he had known growing up in Arizona to come here and minister to students in Indiana. That's what it's like when you know Jesus. Uh, you keep fighting the good fight to finish the race. And when you're all said and done, you used your life to do something that matters. You know, I'm just realizing they got a flat screen TV here. This is the way to this is the way to travel. If Eric were here, I think his mind would be blown. We, it's like we went from the Yugo to the Ferrari all in one trip. I've here. heard a lot so, of stories about his RV. I'm excited to see it. So we're about halfway to Union City right now, and Erin Lemmy, one of our main worship leaders for Mercy Kids, she busts out this amazing hummus, and I'm like, where did you get this? She made it, folks, and it's like the finest like blended hummus I've ever seen. It's really yum, really delicious, smooth, really smooth. We love that. So this is what we do. It's good. I'm the food bringer and my husband's the food eater. I want you to know his heart. I love him. <laughs> Adam, what are you doing here, man? You're, you've been a part of the outpost for a short time, right? Like one of the, the shortest times here and tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Chris kind of pitched his vision of what the Mercy Fest was all about. Uh, we joined the outpost probably maybe three weeks ago. I don't know. It's, we, we've only been to a couple. And uh, yeah, we really liked what Chris had to, had to say about it and excited to be part of it. Let's get Bruce to sit down here too. Come on over. Now, I know you, you're a, a roadie regular. so I try. Yeah, tell us what you're going to be doing today. Uh, my job today is lights, I believe. So uh, we'll be setting up and uh, Trying to make Eric look as pretty as we can. It's Julian's be not difficult. a problem. Eric's I'll a, little, pray for you. a little tougher. He's, he's amazing. He's a lot of fun. Although I'm sure on their RV, I bet it's super hot on that RV right now. It's probably so hot and miserable. And nobody probably wants to be there. They're probably sweating. Okay, it's official. It is cold enough in this RV to see your breath. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, film or not. But we're still really excited to go share the gospel with a bunch of youth today. So, uh, woo, here we go. Right now, we are a few weeks in to the 90-day challenge of reading scripture. I just want to check in. How you doing on that? Hope you are. I know uh, I'm living on sabbatical right now, but I'm going to hopefully be participating as well. Or maybe it's the 90-day tithe challenge. What's it look like for you to invest in your relationship with Jesus, community with him, and community with one another? And, and about the community thing, church, we have to remember that our Although our, our faith is very personal, it's not private. And so if, you, if you're watching online and, and maybe you've actually never even stepped foot in our facility or a local church facility for that matter, it's so important for us to find community to do our faith with because our faith was always personal, but it's never 
private. But you've got to remember that when you enter into what God has called you to do, and you go on mission, you will be shocked at how much fun it is, how much fun it is, and how exciting it is to be with a community that are all around the same goal of getting the gospel outside the walls of the church and into the cities like this. How cool is oh, that? Wait. It's Mrs. Wick's pies. Oh, Wick's Can Wick. we? Do we have time to pull over and get a pie? I don't think we do. We got to get to the event, but someday we are going to come back, Mrs. Wicks. We are in motion today, exactly as Luke is talking about. It, it is not always private as public. We are uh, literally, man, this is how friendships are made. You are missing out mm -hmm. if you don't live on mission with other people and make an impact in the local community. Find an outpost. Get plugged in. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we invite you to check out mercyroad.cc. We'd love to have you join us. If you're watching around the country, you can watch online every week at mercyroad.tv. Uh, but join us in growing your faith and then living on mission to make an impact with the short time we've got. Fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. Grow, study scripture, pray, invest in what God has done in your life, and you will never regret it because when you look back and all is said and done, whether you're 25 or you're 80 years old, you can still live on mission, and when all is said and done, you get to look back and say, man, those hours that I invested for God actually made an impact that lasted not just for a short time, but for eternity. That's why everybody here is doing this. We're fighting the good fight, we're finishing the race, and we're keeping the faith. I mean, I told cool. you, I told you, Rob, that Eric's RV was going to smell bad at some Wor point. Worse than I thought. I though. know, so bad. Now that you've seen Mercy Road in motion, this is a great example of what outposts do in their own communities to be on mission for Jesus. Yes, and if you have never got involved in joining an outpost, today is the day that you should take that step. We want you to fill out a form. You're going to see it on the video. You're going to see it in the chat. We want you to get connected because Outpost is an incredible way for you to one, discover what your heart and what your passion is as you serve on mission with others. This was just one example, but now it's your turn to take the next step. Have you joined an Outpost, Megan? We are starting one at my house soon, actually. Awesome, so Megan has an outpost that you can join. I have an outpost that's going on in uh, Whitestown. Mm -hmm. You've got Eric and I'm you've got the Mercy, yeah, the Mercy yeah. Fest one. We have them all over the community. So no matter where you're at, we have different groups that have different interests. This is your morning to take that step. Why should somebody get connected to an outpost, Megan? Oh my gosh, living on community with people who are um, in your church that you see every Sunday, and then you get to see them during the week doing something specific in your own community, something you're passionate about, something that you feel like God has laid on your heart to make a difference um, and actually get out of your seat and do something. I love that you're never alone. I love that when you're in community with other people, you're, you're having that tough time or you need that extra encouragement or somebody else needs to be encouraged. There's a community of people that are coming together, doing life together, that are involved and they're, they're actually gonna be there when you need them. And so that's an awesome opportunity. A lot of us are looking for that in our church experience, but it takes getting connected and taking that
that risk. So fill that form out today. You know, we are really glad that you joined us online today. We hope that you come back and join us next week for That's Student right. Takeover. So, Which is gonna be crazy again. So Mercy students, they are the fastest growing ministry in our church right now, and they are taking over all aspects of serving next Sunday. So come back and experience all that Mercy Students has to offer. Hey, we wanna thank you for joining us online. We hope that you come back next week. You know what to do, Mercy Broad Church. Live boldly. And love deeply. Awesome. We'll see you next week.